she was terrified, ran back to town, and what did she say? Come see a man who told me things that I have ever done. Could this be the Christ? And they found he was. The present, some of you may remember the story of Philip. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Only God knows the unknown. How did Jesus See Nathaniel, when no one else but God saw him, the future. Jesus predicted his betrayal, his crucifixion, his death, his resurrection in such minute details that even the disciples themselves, overwhelmed, could not for a while believe him. He also predicted Peter's denial three times, his most faithful follower, he accurately described the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place 37 years later. And in addition to that, he told of the end of the world and the conditions leading up to it, which we right now, tonight, in London and all over the world, are experiencing. Even in what we call the Lord's Supper, Jesus predicted his death for sinners, resurrection, and second coming. Can anyone, in clear conscience, intellectual honesty, and in the pursuit of fairness, say after these clear proofs that Jesus was anything but God in flesh. Even the Quran testifies that Jesus is the only person who knows the hour of judgment. Matthew's gospel, we are told that the wise men of the east came to Bethlehem. You see, God is to be worshipped. Listen to this. When they came, they asked, where is he? who is born king. Strange that they call the child king instead of the proper title prince. At any rate, we discover in verse 11 of Matthew 2, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him, not Mary. I encourage you, my dear friend, to recognize that wise men still worship him. The three gifts, gold representing him as king, frankincense representing him as God, myrrh representing him as dying for us as savior. Even demons recognized and worshiped Jesus. Mark 5, 6, 7 tells us of the story. But when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, son of the most high God? In Luke 20, 41, we see several facts. Among them, the worship offered Jesus even by his enemies. Jesus is speaking. And he said to them, How can they say that the Christ is David's son? Now David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. David therefore calls him Lord. How is he then his son? According to the ninth chapter of John, Jesus healed a young man born blind. Then we read in verse 35 through 38, the exciting end of the story. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking to you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Let me present your inquisitive minds and seeking hearts with a glimpse of who Jesus is according to Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and following. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. God is also omnipotent, all-powerful. Who in the world has power over nature and the elements? You say, of course, God. Then tell me, please. Tell me, please. Who was Jesus when he stilled the storm over Galilee, according to Luke 8, 22? And what about his walking over the water, Mark 6, 45? Add to that, he's going up to heaven, defying gravitation at the conclusion of his earthly ministry, of redemption according to Acts 1, 4 and following. Elijah was taken up in a chariot, my friends, a chariot of fire. But Jesus went up on his own power because he could do it. Power over life. In Matthew 21, 18, following we read, Jesus had power to annihilate. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, remember he was hungry because he was a man. He chose to be a man. He was a perfect man, a perfect God. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately the fig tree withered away. Power over death. The familiar story of raising Lazarus is found in John 11. The body had been in the grave, rotting for days. Yet Jesus called him back to life. Jesus also raised a 12-year-old girl in Mark 5, a teenage boy, Luke 7, and do not forget what he said. He declared, I am the resurrection and the life. John 11:25. Power over Satan and his demons. Luke 8, 26 tells a fantastic encounter of Jesus with the demonic world. Then they sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. When he stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. 